Hi, my name is Dominic, and today let's have a look at Isaiah 60. But before we do, let's consider the name of our Father who is in heaven. In Psalm 68, verses 4 and 5, we learn the name of our Father who is in heaven, and we learn what his name means. Let's go to Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing unto God, sing praises to his name, extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. And so in Psalm 68 verse 4, we learn the name of the father. Using the King James Version of the Bible, we see that here his name is written as Jah, but the letter J is relatively new to the English vocabulary. Originally, this would have read Yah, and so the name of our father, according to Psalm 68, through the mouth of David, the king of Israel, the name of our father is Yah. What does Yah mean? Well, Psalm 68 verse 5 gives you the definition. A father of the fatherless. Yah means father. And it says so right here in Psalm 68 verse 5. But there is a variation of the word Yah. And that variation is a H. Ah. And it's a word that is used by many of the prophets, including Isaiah himself. Now, the name Isaiah means God is my salvation. That's because in the word Isaiah, you have the letters A-H. The A-H is the portion of the word Isaiah that refers to God, that refers to Father, our Father in heaven. And so, Isa would refer to salvation, Ah to our father, and therefore Isaiah, our father, is salvation. Now, let us look at the word A-H and let us see how Isaiah has used it um, in the book of Isaiah. What we'll do is we will take a brief survey of the book of Isaiah, all this leading up to chapter 60, which in no uncertain terms makes clear which nation that Isaiah is talking about? Which nation that Isaiah calls the branch? The branch of David. The branch of Judah. The branch in the tree of life that is supposed to serve as the light of the world in these latter days, in these days that we find ourselves in today. Let's read Isaiah together. First, let's go to chapter 1. Verse 2, this is our Father talking. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Here, our father is saying that here we are today, the children of Israel, and the children of Israel does not know who they are. The ox know who his master is, but the children of Israel does not know who their father is. Well, their father is the king of Israel. Their father, our father, is in heaven. Let us continue. Ah! Sinful nation, a people laden with inequity. Here our father is telling us who he is talking to. He is talking to a nation, and he refers to that nation using the word ah, which is a h. A h ah is a variation of the word yah, and it means the same thing. Father, this fact is known in the Israel of today, many of the Jewish scholars in today's Israel is very much aware that Ah 
is a word that means Father and that is used to refer to our Father in heaven. Verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with inequity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. And so our father is saying that these children that he has raised, these children that he has brought up, this children that is today scattered all over the earth, that are in every nation, in every kingdom, these children does not know that they are the children of God. They do not know that they have the very blood of Israel, of Jacob, of Abraham in their veins. And so our father through Isaiah is reaching out to all of his children of Israel. And specifically, he is reaching out to that specific tribe, that specific nation of the tribe of Judah that he calls the branch, that he calls the branch of his planting, that he calls the work of his hands. So he is reaching out to those specific children because he has left them as a remnant, a remnant that is to be the light of the world today. Verse 7, he is talking specifically to the branch. Verse 7, your country is desolate, your cities are burnt with fire, your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Now, a lot of you out there will be very surprised, in fact, shocked to learn that the nation that the Father has left, the remnant that he left to serve as the light, well, that remnant, that nation, is to be found in the isles of the sea, in the isles of the Caribbean Sea. That nation is Haiti and the rest of the islands of the Caribbean. Haiti being the center and largest island. Haiti is the branch. Haiti is the remnant that our father has left. And when you read Isaiah, you can clearly see that the, this nation of Haiti today is clearly seen in all of the words, in all of the chapters um, in which the branch is addressed. Um, consider what we just read, verse 7. It says, your country is desolate. That describes Haiti today. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers, devour it in your presence. Even as we speak today, this branch, this nation of Israel that our father has left is encompassed by armies. The United Nations Armed Forces is very prevalent in all the cities of Haiti. Um, and not only that, you have more than 10 thousand non-government organizations that are operating in Haiti, operating for profit, operating for personal gain, operating with the intention of taking away all the resources and the riches of the land and leaving the branch and leaving the seed that the father has planted himself, leaving them with nothing. And so, verse 7, we clearly see it in Haiti. Um, it says, strangers devour it in your presence. As we speak today, all of the nations of the world, all of the elite of the nations of the world are in Haiti. And they are devouring it in the presence of the people who live there. It is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Here we see a definition for desolate. To be overthrown by strangers. That is the condition that Haiti is in today. It is desolate. It has been 
overthrown by strangers. It is being run by strangers, not by the people that our father would have run it, but strangers, the Canaanites, children that are not the children of our father. And what does our father call Haiti? What does he call Haiti and the islands? He called them the daughter of Zion. Let's read on. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard and as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like Gomorrah. Let's go on to verse 18. Come now, our father writes, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured. With the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Thy silver is become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. The princes of the daughter of Zion, the princes of the branch, the princes of Haiti, are all those people who are in a position of authority, who are in a position of power over the other people of Haiti. Those people are most rebellious, and they have become the companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts, and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, here our father is talking again, and he has referred to himself as Ah. He has referred to himself as Yah, as father. Let's read verse 24 again. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries, and avenge me of mine enemies, and I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away the drops, and take away thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city, Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her covenants with righteousness. Again, our father has called the branch, the city that he is talking to, the nation that he is talking to. He has called them Zion, the daughter of Zion. Let's go on to chapter 2. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days... The last days, these are the days that we are in right now. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Our father says that he shall establish his house on top of the mountains. Well, Haiti, the entire nation, and most of the islands of the Caribbean, these islands are built on mountaintops. They sit on top of mountains. That's why when you look in the dictionary, you will see that the word Haiti means a land that is high and mountainous. This is where our father has chosen to rest his house. This is where he has chosen to build his house, to establish his house and his kingdom here on earth upon the mountains of Haiti. And we read in verse 2 that all nations shall flow to it. That's because the gathering of the children of Israel, 
the gathering of all the tribes of Israel shall be to the islands, shall be to the isles in the sea, with Haiti as a focal point. Verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the Lord. Many of us in the Christian world believe that the Lord has been abandoned. This is not the case at all. The same father that we had yesterday is the same father that we have today. And the same father that we will have tomorrow and forever. His words do not pass away. He has said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his words shall not pass away. And he gave us his law, and he said that his law we should write in our hearts and in our minds forever and ever, for all generations. And so, in these latter days, as the light of our Father shines on the branch, he, has, he shall also shine his law and his words on the branch. And the law we shall learn from the branch of his planting, from Zion. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines. Well, after Europe came into the Americas and read the devastation that they did upon Haiti and the rest of the islands and upon North and South America, we find that, that these nations that were reduced in many areas, they were reduced by over 90%. These nations had to be replenished from our brothers from the east, from the east of America is Africa. And so that's why you had the big slave trade. After the European nations came and destroyed population after population, nation after nation in the Americas, we had to be replenished from the East, from our brothers, from among the ranks of our brothers that had uh, created nations along the African coast. Let us continue. Because they be replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and, and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Chapter 3, verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be with it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Here in verse 12, our father is explaining the situation that we are in today. Wherever you go, um, we are being misled. Our father had decided that the men shall lead. He has decided, he had decided that the tribe of Levi shall lead. Today, most of our families are being led by women. And most of our people are being misled because we are being led 
by a people that the Father did not want leading us. Chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. And so our Father is saying here in verses 4, in chapter 4, verse 1, he is saying that just as in the days of Abraham and in the days of the children of Abraham, in the days of King David and in the days of King Solomon, in that day things will be as they were. You will have one man that shall have more than one wife. And the reason for that is because that is the way of our father. He does not want a woman to be a widow. He does not want her to not have her covering, which is her husband. And so in that day, when we do learn of the law, when we do learn of the ways of our father, seven women will take hold of one man and say, please let us wear your name. Let us carry your name to take away our reproach. And in verse 2 we read, in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. Again, the branch is Haiti. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Because those who have made it, those who are able to escape Babylon, escape captivity, escape Egypt, they will be flowing to the islands with Haiti as a primary destination. The reason that this is news to many people, the reason that this is news to most people, is because we have been lied to. It's because if you are a person of color, everything that you learn about your history and everything that you learn about Haiti is a lie. In chapter 5, verse 13, we read, Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are vanished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. We have no knowledge. We have forgotten knowledge of the holy. And therefore, we do not know what's going on today. We do not know that the branch that the father has planted with his own hands is very much alive and it's in the isles of the sea. Just like Isaiah explains in many, many parts of the Bible. Let's go now to, let me see, chapter 5 verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness for the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Let us read it again. It says, They have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despiseth the word of the Holy One of Israel. How do we cast away the law, you say? Well, you have casted away the law. If you are saying that we live under grace and not under law, you have cast away the law. And it, the Father writes, we have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Well, of course. A lot of us, a lot of you listening, have despised the word of the Holy One. The Holy One of Israel has told us to keep our Sabbath holy. In fact, he didn't say that just once. 
He said it hundreds of times through the mouths and the words of many prophets. And yet we despise his word and we take Sunday as the day that we are to worship, completely disregarding the word of the Father as if it means nothing. Let's go to chapter 7, verses 13 through 16. And he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Here, our father is talking about a child, and the name of the child is Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? Emmanuel means God is with us. Now, many of us have associated Emmanuel with the branch, and that is accurate. That's because in the Bible, a man is also the founder of a nation, at least very often. When you speak about a man, you are speaking about also the father of a nation. Our Messiah, our Messiah, the son of our father, the son of the Most High, he is also the branch and he is also the father of the branch because it is he that shall guide us and lead us into the branch in these latter days. And so Isaiah is talking throughout the entire book of Isaiah. He is talking about the branch. And when he is talking about the branch, he is talking about the man, the Messiah, that is the branch. And he's talking about the nation of the Messiah, which is also called the branch. And notice that they have the same name. The word I-E-T is a Hebrew word that's in two parts. I-E-T. I means father. E-T means with me. I-E-T means father is with me or father is with us or God is with us. The same way that the other branch, the other the, the person with the name of the branch, the Messiah, his name is Emmanuel. His name also means God is with us. And so it's very important to bear that in mind as we continue our brief look at the book of, of Isaiah leading up to Isaiah 60. Uh, let us go on to chapter 8, verses 6 through 10. With verse 5, The Lord spake also unto me again, saying, For as much as the people refuseth the waters of Shiloh, and go softly, and rejoice in resin, and remile your son, now therefore behold, the Lord bringeth up upon the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels, and go over all his banks, and he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over, he shall reach even to the neck. And the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. The stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. Emmanuel is the Messiah. So this verse is saying, thy land, Messiah, the land of the Messiah. Well, the land of the Messiah is the branch. That is the nation that the Messiah shall found in these latter days. That is today called Haiti. Verse 9. 
Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. You see right here again the words, God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means, God is with us. And that's what I-E-T means, God is with us. I-E-T, the land of Emmanuel, the land of God is with us. The land that is called the branch by our father and by the prophets. Let's go to verse 20. To the law and to the, and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Again, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, that means that any pastor, any reverend, any friend that speaks to you that does not speak according to the word of the law of our Father, it is because there is no light in them. That is because the laws and the commandments of God is the light of the world. And if you disregard the light, if you disregard the law, then you have no light. There cannot be light in you without the laws and the commandments of God. And so if you despise the law, if you say that we live under grace and not under law, you are despising the law and there is no light in you. But our father writes that the branch of his planting is going to serve as the light in these latter days. That's why he writes that the law shall go forth from Zion, from New Jerusalem, from the branch. And so, even now, as the light of our Father shines on Haiti, shines on IET and the islands of the Caribbean, he is also bringing them his laws and he is bringing them his commandments that they may learn that what they learn, they can now share with the rest of the world. Once they are able to receive the light themselves, then they can shine that the world may know the laws and the light also. Moving on to chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and, the, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. And so, for unto us a child is born. Well, this child, as we know, is the Messiah, is Emmanuel. And this child is also IET. Because just as a, a child is born, a nation needs to be born as well. A nation must have, uh, must be born. Um, a nation simply does not exist without birth. And we know there is no birth without, without birth pains, without labor pains. And so even as we speak today, Jerusalem, Haiti, IET, is encompassed by armies, and IET is being devoured from within. This is the labor pain, because she is about to deliver a child. 
Let's go on to verse 16, chapter 9. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. That's because our leaders, even today, refuse to hearken unto the word of our Father. We refuse to obey his laws and commandments. Instead, we follow the teachings of the Canaanites. We follow the teachings of the Babylonians, and that can only lead to destruction. Um, it would make sense that if you are a child of Israel, that your teachers would also be children of Israel, not the children of the Babylonians. Let's go on to chapter 10, verses 20 through 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel as, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but they shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The word truth is very important. The Father does not want you to worship him with lies. He doesn't want the basis of your worship to be lies. He wants you to have truth. He wants you to worship him in truth, not with lies. Once you introduce lies, you have polluted the word of the Father. Continuing, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. That's because in the latter days, and the churches do not talk about this at all, in the latter days, all of Israel, all of Israel whose eyes the Father has opened, everyone that the Father has anointed, all of his saints shall return or shall go towards the branch, shall go towards the isles in the sea to wait upon the Father. Why wait? Because the kingdom is coming. The Messiah said when we pray, pray that the kingdom comes. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. If the kingdom is coming, it means we are not going. The kingdom is coming to us, and we are to wait for the Father. And Isaiah is giving us instructions as to where we are to go to wait for the Father. Verse 21 again. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people, Israel, be as the sand of the sea, that's because today all of the tribes of Israel, all of the members of the tribes of Israel are to be found in all the kingdoms of the world. So today we are in every nation, we speak every language, and we are every color, not just one color, as you see in Israel today, but we are every color. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt for yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord God of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him, according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. 
And so our father is telling us that the days of our captivity shall soon end. In the same way he delivered our fathers from Egypt, he shall deliver us again today from captivity in these latter days. Now, again, we have said in the Bible that when you, when you read about a man, say Abraham, he is the father of countless nations. When you read about Esau, he too is the father of many, many nations. Again, the Messiah, our prince, is the father of a nation. And when you speak about the branch, you are speaking about the man who is the Messiah, and you're speaking about the nation that he is responsible for, the nation that he has founded, and that nation is also called the branch. And that nation today is IET, what you call Haiti, and the islands. Chapter 11 deals with that exclusively. Let's read chapter 11 together. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears." But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the apse. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord, and the waters cover the sea. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day shall be there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for a sign of the people. To it shall the Gentile seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Well, the root of Jesse is to be found in the isles of the sea. That's where the mountains of our father is. And the root is IET. And the root shall be a sign for the people. And all the Gentiles and all the children of Israel shall flow to the sign, shall flow to the root, to the branch that is in the isles of the sea. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up a sign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. 
That's because the Isles are in the so-called Western world. So here, those of the children of Israel that live in the East, that is in the Old World, Europe, Africa, and Asia, and the members of the Gentiles that want to be under the covering of our Father, they shall flow unto the islands. Verse 14 again. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and, men, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway. The prophets talk about this very often. There shall be highways that lead to Zion, that lead to the holy mountains in the isles of the sea. Verse 16, and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Notice our father says, it shall be like as it was to Israel. That's because we are not going to Israel this time. We are going to the branch. We are going to gather, not in ancient Israel, but we are to gather to the branch. And the branch is to be found in the Isles of the Sea, upon the mountains, the holy mountains of our Father. Now, let's jump all the way to chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. Chapter 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her inequity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Propel ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Here we see that our Father said that all flesh shall see with their own eyes the kingdom that is to come because the glory of our father shall be revealed verse 9 O Zion that bringest good tidings get thee up into the high mountains O Jerusalem that bringest good tidings lift up thy voice with strength lift it up be not afraid say unto the cities of Judah behold your God Behold, the Lord God will come with strong, with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lamb with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. Chapter 41. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Here we see the words islands again. Our father is talking directly to the islands right now. Um, why is it that we never speak about the islands? In all the days that we have been going to church on Sunday, not once have we spoken about the islands, about what does it mean for the islands to wait or to listen or to keep silent before our father. Let's read verse 41 again. Keep silence before me, 
O islands, and let the people renew their strength. That's because the people shall be gathered from the nations, and when they get to the islands, they shall be tired. They will need to renew their strength. Let them come near. Let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and as a driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet. Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. The isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near and came. Let's go to chapter 42, verses 1 through 12. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Here our father is talking to his servant. Remember that the Bible, in the Bible, a founder is a father and he is a nation. The Messiah is the founder of the nation of IET. And in chapter 42, our father is talking to both the man, the Messiah, and he is talking to the nation that the man has founded. The nation of the Messiah. That nation is IET, Haiti and the Isles of the Caribbean. Chapter 42, verse 1 again. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his law. And the isles shall wait for his law. The islands shall wait for his law. That's because the Messiah, his first task shall be to shed, to shine the light of our Father unto the branch, unto IET and the islands. And so the islands have to wait for the Messiah to bring him, to bring them his law. And from there, the law may shine for the rest of the world. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. And so our Father, he has given us the Messiah, the prophet that Moses spoke about, and he has given us the branch, the nation that the prophets have spoken about. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images like those graven images of the cross and of Jesus. Those images are not of God, they are of the devil. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and the new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants of the earth, again the islands. 
Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. These are the islands of the branch, the islands of IET, of Haiti and the Caribbean. Let's go to 43, verses 1 through 4, chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. The gathering shall be to the south, to Haiti, from the United States, from Canada, from Europe, from Asia, from North Africa. All these shall flow south to the islands of Haiti and the Caribbean. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Verse 10, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. This verse as in many of the other verses of the Bible, points to the fact that there is one Father, one Creator, one God. Any idea, any theory that says that there is more than one God, that theory is not a theory based on truth. That idea is not born of truth, but is born of a lie. And it has polluted the truth. And... Um, and the truth is, there is only one God. There is no holy trinity. There is no trinity. A trinity means three. Our Father says there is only one. I have declared and have saved and have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Ye before, yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver you out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. This is important because Isaiah is letting you know who today's Chaldeans are. He is letting you know who today's Babylonians are. You need to go no further than to go to Haiti. And you can see who the Babylonians are. Look off, look underwater surrounding Haiti. There you will find battleships. 
that is the cry of the Babylonians. Their battleships. When you see their ships descending upon your nation, you are in big, big trouble. That is how they come. Just like Christopher Columbus came with the Nina, the, the, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. His cry was in his ships. Today, the cry of the Babylonians remains in their warships, in their ships. And the Father wrote that so that we may know who they are today. Um, verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. We have a King, and our King is the Father of all. Verse 18, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old? The Father is asking us, why do we not remember the former things? People that say forget the past and think about the future, well, those people, they are misleading you. Because if you ignore your past, you will have no idea what to do about your future. You will be lost. So our Father writes, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Chapter 44, verses 1 through 8. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord, that made thee, and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the watercourses. One shall say, I am the Lord's. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. This is already happening. This prophecy is already happening. Many, many people who have uh, been awakened, many, many people who have come to realize that we do indeed have the very blood of Jacob coursing through our veins. A lot of, 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 of these people uh, have changed their names. A lot of us who have learned that um, have changed our names, some to Israel, to David Ben Israel, we've, cha we've, we've changed our names to reflect the fact that we know who we are. And our Father has said that during these latter days, knowledge shall be increased. It is because of the increase of knowledge that our brothers and sisters have decided to take a name. 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. There is only one God. And who, as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them, feel ye not, Neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. We only have one Father. There is no Trinity. Let's jump to chapter 45, verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. There is only one God. There is only one creator. Hear, O Israel, 
the your father the most high is one creator well let's go to chapter 46 verses 9 and 10 remember the things of old our father has asked us not to forget the things of old he didn't say forget the Old Testament. He didn't say forget what happened to your father Israel. He didn't say forget his laws and his commandments. He says remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Our Father is saying that He declares the ending at the beginning. With our Father, there is no secrets. He tells you all things that are to come, so that and a person or a man or a soothsayer will not be able to come to you and say it is from his sorcery. It is from him reading palms or it is from him reading the stars and the heavens that he knows these things or that these things will happen. Our father has said that he alone has declared the ending at the beginning so that you may know and so that you may know how to walk in his light and that you may live because in his laws and in his commandments is light and is life that light is the life of man now what does our father say about uh, Babylon right because in Revelation 18 there is a voice that comes out of heaven that says Come out of her, my people, so that you do not suffer in her plagues, and so that you do not participate in all of her evil ways. Let's see what, uh, what Isaiah says about Babylon, uh, chapter 47, verses 1 through 15. Come down and sit on the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Just like there's the daughter of Zion, which is Haiti, I-E-T, you have ancient Babylon, and today you have the daughter of Babylon. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstone and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance, and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But... These two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day. That's why we learn in Revelation that in one hour, Babylon shall be destroyed. That's because nobody see it coming. Everybody believes that they are secure. Everybody believes that this kingdom that our father calls Babylon shall last forever. Everybody believes that it will never end. But our father said, nay, 
it shall surely end. Verse 9 again. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one hour, the lost of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else besides me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so, be thou shalt be able to profit. If so, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in thy multitude of thy counsels. Let, n let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up. And save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants. From thy youth they shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. 48. Verses 16 through 22. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there I am. And now the Lord God and his Spirit hath sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy, One of, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldst go. O oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. The Father said, had we kept his laws, had we kept his commandments, all of the hardship, the slavery, the death, the, the suffering, none of it would have happened if we had kept his laws and if we had kept his commandments. Thy seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off, nor destroyed from before me. Go ye forth out of Babylon. So here Isaiah is telling us what the prophet John will tell us later again in Revelation. Leave Babylon. You cannot stay there because the wrath of God shall fall upon her. Go ye forth, verse 20. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare ye, tell this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsted not when he led them from the, through the desert. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. In chapter 49, the father is talking to the islands again. Not the gent islands, not the gent isles, not the islands of the gentlemen, not the European islands. Those are the gent isles. Gentiles. Our father is instead talking to the islands that he calls the branch. Haiti, 
and the island nations of the Caribbean. Those are the islands that our father, through the prophet Isaiah, is talking to throughout the book of Isaiah. And in chapter uh, 49, he is talking to the islands pointedly again. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from afar. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. This is the prophet Isaiah talking. Here he is speaking for Emmanuel. Here he is speaking for IET. Both Emmanuel and IET means God is with us. So he is saying that the Father has called the Messiah by his name, Emmanuel, from the very beginning. And he has called his nation, Ah, or I-E-T, by name in the Bible, also from the very beginning. So it has never been a secret to us, nor is it a secret today. It's just that today, knowledge is being increased. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from afar. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he made me, and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. So we see that the Messiah was sent, was created, was formed in the womb. The Messiah and his nation of IET, his nation that the Father calls the branch, was formed from the womb in order to bring Jacob again to him to the Father in order to gather the tribes of Israel. Verse 5, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, Is it a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. And so the father is saying that he has sent the Messiah not just for Israel, but also for the Gentiles, also for the rest of the world. And so he has raised up the branch his remnant, not just for Israel's sake, but also for the sake of the Gentiles. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. What does God call his son, the Messiah, Emmanuel? What does God call, what does our father call the branch? He calls them the that he said that they may be his salvation unto the end of the earth. That's why we see that other prophets have said that salvation is of the Jews. The Jews are the people of the branch or the people of the tribe of Judah. Embodied today, collected today in the branch in Haiti and the islands of the Caribbean, in Haiti and the islands. Chapter, uh, verse 7, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, 
Kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel. And he shall choose thee. The same way that every man, that most men on earth hated the Messiah, they hated Emmanuel, the son of our father, so too today most men hate the branch of his planting. Most men hate Haiti. In fact, the word Haiti sounds like the very word hate. It is synonymous with hate because most of the nations of the world hate Haiti and most of the peoples of the nations of the world hate Haiti. Even Haitians themselves tend to hate Haiti and tend to not even want to go or be associated with Haiti. Verse 8, Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people. So the Messiah and his nation is given as a covenant to the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinim. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and the Lord hath forgotten me. Well, today, Haiti is a place forsaken. Haiti is a place that has been forgotten. Here's what the father says, verse 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. Yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Lift up thine eyes round about and behold. All these gather themselves together and come to thee. As I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all. And as with an ornament. And bind them on thee as a bride does. For thy waste and thy desolate places and the land of thy destructions shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants. That, and they that swallowed thee up shall be far away. So the father said even though the islands be desolate now. Because they have been taken away by strangers. And even though they seem small now, yet shall they be able to hold all of the gathered of the elect of our Father. Verse 20. The children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the other, shall say again in thine ears, Thy place is too straight for me. Give me place. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard, 
to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be nursing. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers. And their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the ground. And lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. Chapter 52. Verses 1 and 2. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Here our father is talking to Haiti and the islands again. And the people of Haiti, most of them do not know who they are. And so the father is telling them to awake. Awake. Open your eyes. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Verse 15. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which had not been heard, shall they consider that's because the Messiah and his nation shall bring truth to the world and shall bring truth to the evil powers that be and they will hear things that they never thought they would have ever heard in chapter 50 our father pleads with his nation that he calls the branch and he pleads with all of Israel Let's read chapter 50 together. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your inequities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all, that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh, because there is no water, and dieth for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning, he wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. 
I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me, who will contend with me. Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they shall all wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord, and stay upon his God. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire, and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall ye have of mine hand, ye shall lie down in sorrow. Chapter 51, verse 4. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and mine arm shall they trust, and on mine arm shall they trust. Again, the islands shall wait for our Father, that is because the kingdom is coming. And on mine arm shall they trust. My father has called his arm the branch, and in the branch shall they trust, and in the Messiah shall they trust. Verse 9. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? The father's talking to the branch. That's because the branch lies asleep. All of its inhabitants are sleeping right now. They do not know that they have the blood of Jacob in them. They do not know that the light of the father is shining on them even now. And so the father must awaken them. They must be awakened. Verse 9 again. Awake, awake. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Verse 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I. Even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass? Verse 17. Awake, awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunken at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. Verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Chapter 22, verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Our Father is doing his best to awaken this nation that he calls the branch and this people that he called the seed of his planting. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and 
the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Verse 15. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Verse 53, who, chapter 53, verse 1, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, the arm of the Lord is the branch, the branch of his planting. The nation and the Messiah. The nation is IET. Chapter 56. Now one of the biggest reasons why we do not, um, why we are not as close to the Father today as we had been in years and in generations past is because we no longer obey his Sabbath. We no longer respect the word of our Father. We despise his word, just like we despise his laws. We tell ourselves that his laws no longer mean anything, that they are from yesterday, that they are part of the Old Testament. But our Father tells us that his laws and his commandments are established forever and that they should be taught to our children so that our children may know them from generation to generation. But we do not respect the Sabbath. And our father um, spoke about that through the prophet um, Isaiah in chapters 56 and 58. Let's look at 56 first. Verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment, and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of the man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keeping his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So here the father is saying that he will not let the Gentiles and the other people of the earth who are not of the blood of Jacob, he will not say, he will not let them say, why do they too not have a chance to be redeemed? Why is it that they have been separated? Our father said no, but he shall join everyone that wants to be joined to him, shall be joined to him. Verse 3 again, Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also, the son of the strangers that joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. 
their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The Lord God, which gathered the outcasts of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, besides those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look at their own way. One of these own ways that they look at is that they have abolished um, the Father's Sabbath, whereas the Father has never abolished the Sabbath. And verse 11 again, yea, they are greedy dogs. The Father calls them greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Our Father is saying, do not follow those that refuse his word, those that despise his word. You must stay away from it. Let's look at uh, chapter 57, verse 14. Well, let's look at 13 first. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. The reason our Father says shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain is because the promise of the land that is to be given to the seed of Abraham, that promise will be fulfilled when the kingdom comes. That's why the Messiah said when we pray, we pray that the kingdom comes. And when the kingdom comes, the Father will then fulfill his promise to us and give us the land that he promised to Abraham. Verse 21. There is no peace, saith my Father, to the wicked. That's another one of the many falsehoods that's in today's church. This idea that there is peace. This idea that the wicked can continue doing wickedly and all they have to do is say Jesus and all is forgiven. This is not supported by the Bible. This is not supported by the prophets or the words of our Father. If you are wicked, for you there is no peace. For you there is only the vengeance and the wrath of our Father, the King of Israel. Chapter 56 talks about, chapter 58 also talks about the Sabbath, and um, it, it talks about how much better we would all be if we but simply kept the Sabbath, if we simply remembered the Sabbath to keep it holy. Our Father mentioned the Sabbath day at the very beginning in the book of Genesis. On the seventh day, our Father rested from all the work that he had done. And he blessed the Sabbath day. And he asked us to keep it holy. Not just in the olden days. Keep it holy not just in the Old Testament. Keep it holy today. In the New Testament, it was holy as well, and it continues to be holy. Our Father said, keep the Sabbath holy, and if we do that, we will be blessed. If we don't do that, we are despising 
the word of the Father. We are listening to men. And very often we are listening to the teachings of the very Canaanites and the very Babylonians that our Father warned us about, warned us to stay away from. Chapter 58. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? And thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife, and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast, as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Then thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of past to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for, thee, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. There we see again how Isaiah and our father is saying to remember the Sabbath. You cannot choose of your own free will to change his holy day from Saturday, from the Sabbath, to another day, to Sunday, or any other day. You must remember the Sabbath, and you must keep from polluting it. The blessings are clearly written. And again, we see throughout the entire book of Isaiah that Isaiah speaks a lot about the branch, 
the branch of our father's plantains. He speaks a lot about the daughter of Zion, who is the branch. And he speaks about the holy mountains of our father. In all this, he has also not failed to mention that the branch, that the place that the father has chosen to put his name is in the islands. And he speaks about the islands throughout the entire um, Bible, but throughout the entire book of Isaiah. And in Isaiah 59 verse 18, he mentions the islands again. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. Chapter 60 um, really helps us to think about and to consider exactly um, which nation and where is that nation located um, that Isaiah is talking about when he mentions in Isaiah 1 verses 4. Ah! sinful nation, a people laden with inequity. Ah is a nation. That nation is R-E-T. And in Isaiah 60, um, when we think about Haiti and the islands, as we read um, Isaiah 60, we will see that Isaiah 60 points to Haiti and the islands uh, in, a, in a way that is um, almost too clear and too obvious um, to even seem possible. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Well, the entire earth today is in gross darkness. Um, for most of us, we practically live in Sodom and Gomorrah. All the sins, all the evil ways of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, we live in societies that practice the exact same evil ways. So therefore, we live in darkness. We live in gross darkness. Verse 4. Um, this is our father again talking to his island nation, the branch. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nabojath shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me. Our Father is saying that we shall be gathered from all the corners of the earth. We shall be gathered from all the nations of the earth. So many of us shall be gathered, and so many people shall be joined to those that are being gathered, that it will be as clouds. It would be as a cloud of people descending upon the islands. Verse 8, 
Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me. These are the islands. Surely the islands shall wait for me. These are the islands of the Caribbean. And they shall wait for our Father. We shall wait for the Father because the kingdom is coming. We are not going to the kingdom. The kingdom is coming. Surely the isle shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Unto the name, many of the prophets say that we have to go to where the Father has chosen to place his name. His name is Father, because he is a Father to us all. His name is Yah, his name is Ah, and that place is A-E-T. God is with us. The land of our Father is with us. The land of God is with us. And here it says that, um, that the strangers shall put the gathered on their shoulders with gold and silver. The same way that the father, when he was saving Israel, when he was taking Israel out of Egypt, Israel left with gold and silver, with the riches of Israel. And likewise, when the father is gathering us, he is saying that he shall not gather us empty, but we shall come with the gold and the riches of the host nation where we grew up in. Verse 10. And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls. Even now, Jerusalem, IET, is being built by foreign money, by the elite, by the sons of the stranger. Verse 10. And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Again, we learn in the Bible here that it is the strangers that shall build Jerusalem. They shall rebuild Jerusalem, and the Father shall give it to his children, even as we speak today. The sons of the strangers, the Babylonians, the elite, are already in Jerusalem. They have encompassed Haiti. They are already in IET, and they are devouring it from within. However, in doing so, they are building it at the same time. They are building it for what they believe is their own purpose. But they shall build it, and we shall live in it. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted." The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Here we see Haiti again. Haiti is a land forsaken. Haiti is a place that nobody wants to go to. But our father said, whereas Haiti has been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through her, I will make her an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Then shalt thou shall also suck 
the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So we see in verse 21, it says, Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. That's the land promised to Abraham. The branch of my planting. The father calls this nation the branch. Which branch? The branch of his planting. That special branch in the whole big tree of life. That branch um, that he has saved to serve as the light of the world in this latter day. And he is saying that that branch is the work of his hands, that he, that our Father himself may be glorified, not for the glory of the people of Haiti, not for my glory, but for the Father's glory. And he writes, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. The small one is Haiti and the islands of the Caribbean. The small one is IET. IET shall become a strong nation. And our father wrote earlier that the nation that shall not serve IET shall perish. They shall be utterly wasted because the branch is the branch of our father's planting that he may be glorified. And our Father writes that he himself will hasten it. He will make it happen in its time. And the time indeed has come. <laughs>